Plutist and Plutist. Thank you, Elena, for that inspiring talk. And the bells were cast in the year 1939, so. Syrinx was being chased through the forest by the Greek god Pan. She ran to the river's edge and cried out to help to the river nymphs, and they heard her cry and transformed her into a reed. Pan was enraged, and so he cut the reed, and in so doing, he created the first flute. Then he began to play that flute. So at first glance, it seems like the same old story of the woman as muse for the male creator. Syrinx, well, she inspired Pan's music, and uh, she is really an instrument for his creativity. But I think there is an equally valid and very different interpretation of the story. That is Syrinx, the woman, as creator and inventor. Um, after all, she poured her soul, she poured her whole life into this flute and um, enabled a new wave of creations that were leveraged um, you know, by, by building on that. And in, in Silicon Valley terms, we would say that you know, in, in our modern lingo, uh, Syrinx's flute was really a platform uh, because that flute an, uh, allowed future musicians and composers to uh, express and convey their ideas and emotions. So Syrinx, was she a muse or was she a creator? Well, she was definitely an artistic force. And Claude Debussy was inspired, and he wrote a piece called Syrinx. And it was the first uh, piece for a solo flute uh, written in the 20th century. And uh, so I would like to play that piece for you and uh, also sh show you some details of one of my paintings in the background. And I would uh, also like to leave you with this quote from the French mathematician and philosopher Blaise Pascal, who said, man is but a reed, the most feeble thing in nature. Uh, but he is a thinking reed, and the universe need not arm itself against him to crush him. A drop of water or a vapor will suffice to kill him. But if the universe should crush him, uh, he will be much more noble than that which killed him. So this is what uh, Pan played after Syrinx slipped through his grasp. 